Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us. Coming up on today's show, we will dive into the latest Seattle Seahawks news and rumors, including Drew Brees possibly coming to town, as well as a DK Metcalf extension. We'll get you up to speed on all of those things and more. Let's start out with Drew Brees, the retired quarterback formerly of the New Orleans Saints, is been with NBC the last season as an analyst on their coverage for Sunday Night Football and for Notre Dame. And according to Andrew Marchand of the New York Post, he put out a report this weekend that said Breeze is out as far as NBC's coverage goes, that he will not be returning to the Peacock Network next season as an analyst, that he wanted to do more games as a broadcaster and there was limited opportunities for him to do so, that with NBC, they only have one NFL game and one Notre Dame game a week, so he was going to have to be in the studio for most of the job there, and that Fox had shown some interest in him potentially as a game analyst, and where the money's at in broadcasting, folks, is with game analysts. Look at Tom Brady, what he's about to get paid from Fox whenever he retires at $37 million a year. So nonetheless, Drew Brees out at NBC, and... I think all of us thought right away, okay, well, probably another broadcasting job somewhere of some sorts. He didn't do great when he called the playoff game for NBC last year of the Bengals and the Raiders. So what could be? And then Drew Brees took to Twitter, and that's where things got interesting, starting his own rumors, believe it or not. More on that in just a second. Here's the first tweet from Brees at 4.50 p.m. Pacific time yesterday. Man, signing – Jarvis Landry and Tyron Matthew makes me want to come back and play again. Both those guys signed with the Saints. Great additions and leaders uh, and players there. So that's the first tweet from Drew Brees. He followed that up just a few minutes later with this. Despite speculation from media about my future this fall, I am currently undecided. I may work for NBC. I may play football again. I may focus on business and philanthropy. I may train for the pickleball tour. Didn't know that was a thing. Senior golf tour, coach my kids, or above, all the above. I'll let you know. So Drew Brees is the one that is the first to bring this up, but potentially playing football again. Obviously, what comes to mind first is the New Orleans Saints, his former team where he spent most of his career where he'll be a Hall of Famer eventually, a first ballot Hall of Famer at some point. Uh, the Saints would still own his rights, but there is a possibility about him going to Seattle, according to Peter King of NBC Sports. Here's what he put out Monday morning in his Football Morning in America blog. As for other teams besides New Orleans, the Seahawks might fit despite their talking up of Drew Locke. His left shoulder surgery May 2nd at age 43 after not playing football for 16 months would seem to make a return to football problematic at best. Another person who knows Brees told me Sunday night he's not playing football. So, Peter King says it's possible that if Drew Brees comes back to the NFL and is not playing for the Saints, that he could be a Seahawk. Wouldn't that be something? (laughs) I think that's going to turn a lot of heads one way or another. People would, I think, get excited about a Hall of Fame quarterback, others that Looked at the way Drew Brees finished his career. It wasn't so great. So tell me in the comments section, should the Seahawks sign Drew Brees? I think this is going to be one way or the other. People are going to be on two extremes here. Type HY for hell yes. Type HN for hell no if you think the Seahawks should sign Drew Brees. You're going to get an ad break here. Take advantage of it while the ad's playing. Tell me HY for hell yes, HN for hell no on if the Seahawks should sign Drew Brees. Personally, I don't think Drew Brees has anything left in the tank at this point. He had a noodle arm by the time he was done playing football that last year in New Orleans. He was injured and he couldn't get the ball down the field and it was clear that father time had caught up to Drew Brees. Now, he still might be a better option than Drew Locke even at this point in time, but for me, he's just got nothing left on the table and You have to pry him away from the Saints. They still own his rights. He's going to count about $11 million against the cap if his contract situation stands as is right now. So you have to work through that 
uh, I, I don't see this happening of <laughs> Drew Brees ending up in Seattle of not only him coming off shoulder surgery and not playing that well his final season in New Orleans and being away from football for this past year, but the money situation, to me, there's just too many hurdles to get Drew Brees to join the Seattle Seahawks at this point in time. But who knows? Crazier things have happened before. Coming up in just a few moments, we'll have more on the DK Metcalf extension talks. But first, I got to tell you about this deal that our friends at Fanatics have. It is a T-shirt and long sleeve combination and quite the deal they have for you right now. 25% off at checkout. Go to chatsports.com slash Seahawks combo so you can get your hands on some of these items. It's terrific. Looks good. Great deal. Can't beat it. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks combo. That's chatsports.com slash Seahawks combo. DK Metcalf. Let's catch up to speed on him. The latest on his situation with what that could look like for an extension. seems like everybody else in the NFL has gotten an extension when it comes to a high-profile wide receiver at this point in time, except DK Metcalf. Here is the money of what it looks like right now for guaranteed money for wide receivers. Tyreek Hill bringing in about $52.5 million from the Dolphins. Stephon Diggs bringing in 47.9 from Buffalo to remain there. DeAndre Hopkins gets 42.8 from Arizona. D.J. Moore getting 41.6 from Carolina. That's kind of the outlier. Like, D.J. Moore getting that money? Really? And then A.J. Brown with a new team in Philadelphia gets $40 million. Now, the highest paid per year, not guaranteed, Tyreek Hill there with Miami is getting about $30 million. Devontae Adams with the Raiders bringing in $28 million. DeAndre Hopkins with the Cardinals at $27.3. A.J. Brown with Philadelphia at twenty five. million and Stephon Diggs with Buffalo at 24. So what does this mean for Metcalf? Well, Corbin Smith from Sports Illustrated, who covers the Seahawks, here's what he put out there, breaking down the situation. With only one season of more than 1,000 receiving yards on his resume and a lone all-pro selection, Metcalf hasn't posted as gaudy of overall numbers as Hill, Adams, or Diggs. From a production standpoint, Seattle could potentially argue he hasn't quite earned the $28 million per year as one of the highest, three highest paid at his position. Here's more. Considering his youth, rare physical talents, and impressive numbers to start his career, Metcalf and his agent should be pushing for a four-year pack worth between $100 and $120 million and north of $70 million in guarantees. Now, that's including bonuses and all that. That's not <laughs> what we we're talking about earlier when we showed you those, those guaranteed numbers. Continuing, a deal in the range between what the Eagles paid Brown annually and the two top contracts signed by Adams and Hill should be perfect for both parties. So, we will have more on this in just a second. But I want to hear from you guys the subscribers, if you're subscribed to the channel, tell me in the comments section. Type gang if you are a subscriber. If you're part of what we're doing here each and every day and you have those notifications on and you're watching us here on Seahawks today, here's your chance to stand up among the rest of the crowd and tell us in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you. Type gang if you are a su subscriber. If you're not a subscriber already, go to youtube.com slash Seahawks TV to become a subscriber. We are the only YouTube channel on the internet that is talking about the Seahawks each and every day. Check us out, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. For me, I think the goal for the Seahawks needs to be to extend DK Metcalf before training camp. Put this all aside, have all the distractions taken care of before DK Metcalf touches the football field this summer. To me, I think that realistically can be done. When you've seen all these other wide receivers get paid – and the Seahawks have said they're committed to paying DK Metcalf to keep him around, and you have the June 1 cuts coming, so that will free up some cap space there. To me, I think realistically that should be the goal here. Get this done, get it taken care of before training camp. The numbers on DK Metcalf are incredible. They speak for themselves. Last year, under 1,000 receiving yards, 12 touchdowns, 75 catches, he was great. Can he step up a little bit more? Yes, he can. But his best football is still ahead of him for a guy that's only been in this league three years and played very good at this point. So, 
Before we go, I want to hear from you guys. Will the Seahawks extend Metcalf before training camp? I think it will get done, but what do you guys think? Tell us in the comments section. Type Y for yes, type in for no if you think the Seahawks will get a deal for DK Metcalf done before camp. That's Y for yes, in for no.